the Shenley Laboratories, producer of Penicillin Shenley and Shenley Pharmaceuticals, presents the Encore Theater. The Encore Theater play tonight, Green Light. Our star is Robert Young. Tonight, Shenley Laboratories presents another in a new series of great dramatic programs. Some of our stories are fact, the struggles and accomplishments of great men of medicine. Others are fiction, stories of devotion to an ideal, individual heroism, or great courage. By these programs, Shenley Laboratories would remind you that medical science and progress is not cold, impersonal research or pages of statistics, but a warm human story told in living terms, whether it's the life of one of medicine's immortals or the simple everyday record of service rendered by your own physician. And now, Green Light, starring Robert Young as Dr. Newell Page and with Pedro de Cordoba as Dean Harcourt. The story of a doctor. Newell Page, surgeon, Bay Tree Hospital. And of a girl. Phyllis Dexter. I hated Dr. Page. I thought I would always hate him. The story, too, of a nurse. Francis Ogilvy, staff, Bay Tree Hospital. I loved Dr. Page. I thought I would always love him. The story of a woman of great faith and courage. My mother, Mrs. John Dexter. And of a great religious man, Dean Harcourt of Trinity Cathedral. Man's progress in life is not steadily onward. Sometimes he is stopped by something that is bigger and stronger than he, something he cannot understand and over which he has no control. That's something I like to think of as a red light flashing a halt to the forward surge of his life. And I like to believe there's a power which controls that life, which knows in its infinite wisdom that sometimes man must stop to learn through suffering before going on. For it is as inevitable as time that man progresses to a better future. If not for himself, then through his suffering for his fellow men. When he has learned this, the signal changes and the green light frees him to resume his inexorable march into eternity. You have been listening to... Dean I'll turn Harcourt it off now, Dr. Page. From... What would religion be without music? There was religion long before there was music. I'm sorry. The usual greeting for the doctor is, and how is the little lady this morning? <laughs> and I suppose the usual answer is, terrible, doctor. But since we both are unusual people, I'd say your pulse shows marvelous repose for a patient facing surgery. You can thank Dean Harcourt for that. I do just as I'm thankful for anything that gives a patient courage and confidence. A shorter word for courage and confidence is faith. Whatever it is, you'll need every bit of it now. More bad news? Oh, nothing really serious, except that, well, it's not easy to prepare oneself mentally for an operation. Sometimes a postponement can cause a harmful reaction. What I'm trying to say is... Uh... You're uh, trying to tell me my operation has been postponed? Yes, Dr. Endicott has been detained in Milwaukee. He'll be here as soon as he can. Milwaukee's a beautiful city. It's always seemed full of music to me. Years ago, we used to go there to hear the community singing. You make it work, don't you? No. I simply let it work. How simple things would be if we all had your faith. I'll let you know about the operation as soon as I possibly can. I know you will. Any word of Dr. Endicott yet, Miss Ogilvy? No, Doctor. They can't seem to locate him. Here are Mrs. Dexter's x-rays, Newell. Thanks. Good Lord, look at that. She can't hold out much longer. We, we've got to do something. We'll have to wait for Endicott. She's his patient. We can't postpone this operation any longer. Her life is at stake now. I'll phone surgery. 
Are you crazy? Not unless these x-rays are. Surgery. Surgery, this is Dr. Page. You can't do that. Endicott will... We'll operate on Mrs. Dexter immediately. Plan, Miss Ogilvy. Yes, Dr. Page. Forceps. Dr. Page? Yes, Dr. Endicott. Thank you, Doctor. If you will assist me, I can take over now. Yes, sir. The forceps, Miss Ogilvy. Dr. Page, make the tie, please. She's bleeding badly. Quick. Well, I'm afraid that's that. I did everything I could. She shouldn't have died, Newell. You were doing perfect work. If Endicott had been less upset... I'd rather not talk about it. I saw exactly what happened, and I'm going to tell everybody the truth. Don't you think it's Dr. Endicott's privilege to make his own statement first? Come in. Hello, Dr. Endicott. Oh, uh, Newell, glad you came in. I've been wanting to talk to you. Uh, sit down. Nasty business is Dexter death. I have been trying to convince the board of directors that her death was an unavoidable accident. It was unavoidable, wasn't it? No, sir. For some reason, you cut the pedicle too short for safe legation. I couldn't make the tie, and the hemorrhage resulted. It should never have happened. The problem now is... I probably course... shouldn't have stepped in on the operation, realizing the terrific strain I'd been under. We all love Mrs. Dexter. I felt that her life was my personal responsibility, but all planes had been grounded on account of weather. I've moved heaven and earth to get here in time. I uh, haven't slept in two days. Too tired. I'm sorry, sir. A split second, a woman dies, and a whole career dies with her. A split second is against the 40 years I've given to medicine. I can't be judged on one operation out of thousands, Newell. I can't. Newell. Hello, John. What time is it? Time for you to pull yourself together. Get down to the hospital and tell Endicott and the board where to head in. I can't do that. Why not? What do you want me to do? Stand up before the board and say, Dear, dear, kind gentlemen, it doesn't matter to me that Dr. Endicott taught me everything I know about surgery. It doesn't matter that Dr. Endicott is one of the finest surgeons in the country. It doesn't matter how many lives he's saved, how much pain he's eased, how much comfort he's brought. No, none of that's important. Just me. I'm the only one who's important. Big, important Dr. Page. I know it's tough, Newell, but you've got to protect yourself. A split second. A woman dies and a career dies with her. That isn't right, either. Endicott's a human being, too. He's not infallible. That's no concern of yours. If you resign, you admit that you were responsible for Mrs. Dexter's death. Exactly. Well, that clears Endicott completely. Right. Confound it, you sound as if you were going to resign. I have already. Dean Harcourt, I'm Frances Ogilvy. I was the nurse on the... I was Mrs. Dexter's nurse. Oh, I see. She always listened to your broadcast, and I... I had to talk to someone, so... You see, you see, I know what happened in that operating room, and Dr. Page won't defend himself because of professional ethics, and I... I wanted to speak up, but I thought I should talk to someone first. No man makes sacrifices without reason. Whatever that reason may be, it's in itself compensation for his suffering. But why should Dr. Page sacrifice himself for Endicott? For the moment, that's Dr. Page's problem, not yours. He must have had good reasons, otherwise he wouldn't do it. There's nothing you can do except respect that reason. I see. I've taken a lot of your time. Is there something I can do to repay you? Yes, uh, Phyllis Dexter's waiting to see me. She's pretty upset about her mother's death. Uh, before I talk to her, I want you to take her to the little ante room where you were taken. Ask her whatever questions you wish. Then come back to me and tell me what she says. Just 
throw your coat anywhere, Phyllis. Sorry, the apartment's a little messy. Oh, it's not messy at all. I feel much better after talking to you. And it was very kind of you to invite me over. Not at all. I'll get some coffee on. W- will you answer the door, please? Sure. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought this was Miss Ogilvy's apartment. It is. Come in. Who shall I tell her is calling? Who is it? No. Oh. Hello. Hello, Francis. Well, uh, come in. Come in. Uh, can I can I check your coat? No, thanks. I can only stay a moment. Perhaps I'd better go now. I had no idea you were expecting a visitor. I wasn't. He's the last person in the world I ever expected to see here. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I didn't expect to be here myself. I was out walking in the rain when suddenly, to my surprise, I found myself in front of your house. Uh, Miss Dexter, Miss uh, Phyllis Dexter, just returned from England today. Phyllis Dexter? Miss Ogilvy sort of kidnapped me away from myself. I wish she could do as much for me. That is, I... Uh, uh, well, I, I've got to run along. It's important. Miss Dexter, may I introduce Mr. Walker? If you're as nice as Miss Ogilvy, you'll be well worth knowing. Well, thank you. I... Sit down, Noel. Well, just for a moment. I really can't stay... Did you, uh, enjoy London? Yes, very much. Why are you staring at me? Oh, I'm sorry. You you remind me so much of someone. Really? Yes, someone very lovely. I never expected to meet anyone like that again. Time decides so many things, doesn't it? A split second of time, something happens. Two people meet accidentally. A knife slips. Someone takes the wrong turn. Anything. And without warning... A future has been created. Evidently, you're a fatalist. Hardly. I I only know that things happen, sometimes it seems, with deliberate cruelty. Don't let anything happen to you or hurt you. Well, I've got to go now. Good night. Good night. What a strange man. Him. Yeah. He's a great guy. He's one of a kind. At least he's the only one I've ever seen. Do you think he'll call again soon? (laughs) Honey, there's no way of telling what he'll do, ever. As Dean Harcourt would say, the signals have changed. The lights are against him right now. But he'll get the green light again. He can't miss. Ladies and gentlemen, in a moment we will return to our play, Green Light, starring Robert Young. But first, a message of hope for those in the world of pain. The inspiring promise of greater healing. Because today, in the supply room of 8,383 American hospitals, you will find penicillin. Yet only three years ago, the wonder drug was almost a medical rarity. The firms who devoted themselves to increasing the supplies of penicillin available struggled against many obstacles inherent in its production. Numbered among these firms was Shanley Laboratories. Although these companies have seen the realization of their goal, enough penicillin to fill essential needs, they cannot feel their work is done. Up to the present, research workers at Chenley Laboratories have developed such products as penicillin tablets and trochees for administration by mouth and penicillin ointment and ophthalmic ointment. Now these men are looking forward to the perfecting and production of other and perhaps entirely different types of pharmaceuticals. It is ever the aim of Chenley Laboratories to know more of what benefits to mankind may be derived from medical research. It is our aim, too, to translate the knowledge we gain into production of more and greater aids to healing for all members of the medical profession. And now, back to our play, Green Light, starring Robert Young as Dr. Page and with Pedro de Cordoba as Dean Harcourt. Dean Harcourt, I came here to argue with you about your concept of everlasting life. All right. Please sit down. I want to know how you can justify needless death, greed, and the destruction of a career. I want to know how you can reconcile such waste with your irresistible onward drive. Why? I'm the Dr. Page who operated on Mrs. Dexter. I see. You have a fine religion, Dr. Page. I have none, so far as I know. Religion has many definitions, uh, at least in my dictionary, such as loyalty, devotion, honor. Perhaps, but my dictionary defines it as a kind of opiate used by people with hurt sensibilities to dull them into drowsiness. 
A man needs more than that in his life, something he can get his hands on, something for which to live. Or else something for which to die. I can't even think of anything to die for. Yes, come in. Hello, Phyllis. Hello, Dean Harcourt. Hello, Mr. Wood. I had no idea you knew Dean Harcourt. I didn't until a short while ago. Then you must be in some trouble. Is that why you're here? Well, Dean Harcourt was my mother's friend. He's mine, too. I hoped we'd meet again. I I wanted to ask you to explain some of the strange things you said last night. I'm always saying strange things that I can't explain myself. Now, if you'll excuse me... Well, I had no idea you two knew each other. I'd met Mr. Walker last night. Mr... Splendid, you two should make excellent friends. I'm afraid Mr. Walker doesn't agree with you. That's not it, Miss Dexter. You might have made very good friends, but we met a little too late. <clears throat> uh, my goodness, it's lunchtime already. You must be frightfully hungry, Phyllis. I beg your pardon? I said you must be hungry. I'm not. Uh, sorry, I can't offer you any lunch. Uh, you eat, don't you? Me? Oh, sure, sure, I eat often. When I was a young man, I was always taking a young lady to luncheon, particularly if uh, I'd had some sort of uh, misunderstanding. <laughs> In fact, I was known as uh, Henry Harcourt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you win, Dean. Shall we have lunch, Miss Dexter? Let's. Good. You two run along and have a good time. And by the way, if you have no other plans, have dinner with me next Friday, both of them. I'd love to. So would I. Uh, and bring Miss O'Gilvy with you. Yes, I'll ask her. Goodbye. See you Friday. About eight. Goodbye. You're a strange man. Why do you say that? One moment you're so friendly, and the next you... Why did you say we met too late? Uh, let's sit down on this bench a moment. All right. Last night, when I met you, it was like... Well, it was almost like the beginning of a world for me. I don't know how to explain it very well, except that for a moment... It was like the dawn coming up after a long, dark night. It was as though, in finding you, uh, I'd found an answer to everything, to every heartache, to every loneliness, to every torment. I looked at you, and I wanted to say, if you will spend your days with me, I'll have everything I've ever dreamed about. You thought all that? Yes. Do you know what I thought? I thought, in some strange way, in one look, with one smile, this man has put his hand upon my heart and made it his. And I thought, this is the beginning of many things. It was the beginning, but it was also the ending. The ending? Why? Because your name is Phyllis Dexter, and mine is Newell Page, Dr. Newell Page. Newell Page? Page. Yes, that's why I didn't want to see you again. At least not until I could find some way of telling you, you you have no reason for hating me. No reason? You killed my mother. No. Well, then who did? You might at least have been man enough to accept the blame. You don't understand. It was not I that. think I do understand. Goodbye, Dr. Page. <laughs> I can't understand why he isn't here. No, he's he's usually very prompt. Well, he'll be along. Uh, did you two have a nice luncheon the other day, Phyllis? We didn't go to lunch. Oh? Why not? What happened? Nothing. You're not telling the truth. You lied to me. You introduced Dr. Page as Mr. Walker. I see. Why? Because I saw no reason to upset you or him. I'd do anything I could to make things easier for well, him. Why should he have things made easier for him? Phyllis, you Don't say it. Don't say it. I'm sick of philosophies and sermons and parables. I'm a human being. I have a right to hate or love. Phyllis, what did Paige do to you? He killed my mother. There's something else. Something within you that's been killed. He lied to me. You love him. I don't. I despise him. He didn't even have the decency to take the blame himself. Did he name another doctor? Oh, no. How could he? That's right. How could he? He's too decent, too honest to break the rules he plays by. Why do you say that? Tell her, Frank. No. No, I'll play according to Page's rules now. He didn't have to listen to sermons to become good. He was born that way. He'll always be that way, no matter what happens to him. I don't understand. You will, eventually. You see, my dear, until you have faith, you don't really love. 
Francis. Yes. I've learned much from you today. Thank you. Will you excuse me from dinner, please, Dean Harcourt? Where are you going? To find you. I, I, I'll answer the door. Telegram for Dean Harcourt. Sign here. Yes, thank you. It, it's for you. Oh. What? What is it? I'm afraid you'll have to go a long way, Phyllis. He's in Montana. Montana? The wire's from uh, Dr. Lane. He says Newell asked him to wire and explain that he couldn't come to dinner. And he says he's very ill. He deliberately let a wood tick bite him so that he could infect himself with spotted fever. Spotted fever? He wants to be used as a human guinea pig to test the vaccine. Oh, no! Come on, we've got to get Dr. Endicott in a hurry. Dr. Endicott, Dr. Page is with John Lane. On Boone Mountain? Yes. I won't have him in that pest hole. He'll die like all the rest. He may be dying now. He's down with spotted fever. He gave it to himself to test a vaccine. My fault if he dies. My fault. He mustn't die. I I won't let him. We'll charter a plane. Get out there right away. What's my temperature? It was 102.9 an hour ago. How do you feel? Not bad. Kind of groggy. Pain in the lower quadrant of the abdomen. Make a note of it. I want to see how long it lasts. Why did you ever do such a fool thing? Deliberately infecting yourself, risking your life. If I die, I don't particularly care. And you'll have learned something. There, uh, seems to be a congestion developing in the lungs. Uh, how about taking a blood count? I'd like to see if I'm losing any resistance. Hello, Dr. Lane. How is he? Is he conscious? Yes, but he's sinking. Uh, We'll go right in. Uh, Not you, Miss Dexter. We don't want to upset him. All right. Hello, Newell. Hello, Dr. Endicott. Francis, we can use you. John's getting sick of keeping my chart. We aren't going to let you die. You won't have anything to say about it if that vaccine doesn't work. At the present, I share the same place in society with the guinea pig. John? Yes, Newell. Make that blood count. Watch my temperature closely. I am... I'm becoming stuporous. He's unconscious. No, not yet. Keep your nerve, Francis. You're an old hand at this sort of thing. Yes, Dr. Page. What's my temperature? 104.1. Heart action. Weakening. John. Better not talk, Newell. Take another blood count. Temperature 104.1. Should break before it reaches a hundred five. Can't take a hundred five. Francis, if he dies, I will have killed him just as I killed Mrs. Dexter. What did you say, Dr. Endicott? I was to blame, Phyllis. I was at fault, and I never should have let him take the blame. He's got to live. If there's any justice at all, he's got to live. Now you know what you needed to know, Phyllis. No. I haven't really needed to know anything since the moment when I knew I loved him. His temperature's up to 104.2. I'll go right in. Temperature, last four readings, steady, 104.2. Dr. Endicott, can't you do something? We can't just sit here and let him die. There's nothing we can do for him now, except pray. Francis, Phyllis, Dr. Endicott. His temperature. Look at his temperature. 103.1. It's licked. Phyllis, it's licked. 
He's going to live. He's going to be all right. Dr. Endicott, there's a place for you out here. No, you fellas have already done the most important work on spotted fever. You won't need me here. But the people will need great doctors to help them through their birth. Doctors who haven't forgotten their oath to their fellow men. To share my substance with him and to relieve his necessities when required. I guess I lost sight of what being a doctor means for a while, Newell. But I think I've got the green light now myself. You've been listening to Dean Harcourt, too. Yes, I've been listening. And I'm going to stay out here. Newell, a letter just came from Baytree. Yes, yes, I wrote them explaining everything. Holy smoke! They've appointed me chief surgeon at Baytree. Oh, I'm so proud of you, darling. Oh, Phyllis. Phyllis, how rich I am. How fortunate, how lucky, how happy, how grateful. There aren't enough adjectives to say it. I don't like to interrupt love's young dream, but it's time for Dean Harcourt. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him? And it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him And in him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. In a moment, we'll bring back our star, Robert Young. Ladies and gentlemen, Shenley Laboratories, maker of penicillin Shenley would like to remind you that the American standard of health is higher than that of any other country in the world. We feel sure you will agree that the man who has done most to make this situation true is the American doctor. Shenley Laboratories pledges to do all within our power to aid America's physicians in their work of maintaining America's high standards of health. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Young. Ladies and gentlemen, to sum up the spirit of this Shenley Laboratories program, this beautiful and... Simple prayer of the physician, written centuries ago by Mamonides, seems to me to be apt and fitting. The eternal providence has appointed me to watch over the life and death of all thy creatures. May I always see in the patient a fellow creature in pain. Grant me strength and opportunity always to extend the domain of my craft. This is the prayer of the physician. It is ages old, and yet today it is as new as the hope for a peaceful way of life for all the world. May we invite you to listen again next week at the same time when Shenley Laboratories presents Men in White, starring Robert Taylor, a great star and a great story. Good night. by Lloyd C. Douglas was produced and directed by Bill Lawrence and was broadcast through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, who this year is celebrating the 20th anniversary of Sound Pictures. It was a Gene Holloway adaptation. Robert Young will soon be seen in the Hal B. Wallace Paramount production, The Searching Wind. This is Frank Graham speaking for Shenley Laboratories, producers of Penicillin Shenley, and inviting you to listen to the Encore Theater next Tuesday at the same time when you will hear Robert Taylor in Men in White. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.